It is natural that wealth should be concentrated, because it is natural that men should be unequal. When we legislated equality into our constitution, we forgot to take God into our confidence, and he has gone right on carelessly making men as unequal in their natural endowment and capacity as before. And underneath economic and quality, biology runs its vigorous course and smiles at constitution. Indeed, in that natural inequality of men, there is a certain hidden fatality for all liberal constitutions. As the French revolutionists thought, they are enemies. They are buckets, so to speak, in the well. And when one goes down, the other goes up. For if men are left entirely free, then their natural inequalities have no hindrance and separate men into great, growing, and artificial inequalities, more and more, day after day. And in order to maintain that degree of comparative equality, which seems vital to the unity of a society, some liberty must be forfeited to central control. For if the natural inequality of men proceeds without impediment, it develops so great a concentration of wealth that the dispossessed by their very number and by their revolt and anger become strong enough to smash the institutions created by the possessors. And history in one of its aspects could be described in that tragic grasp of the natural concentration of wealth through the natural inequality of men and the sudden smash of the system through the suffering of great majorities and then the slow resurrection of inequality and the accelerating reconcentration of wealth and its smash again and da capo and fine had not. So that one of the functions of statesmanship is to limit liberty in order to limit inequality, in order to preserve society.